in facing many of life's challenges, there are losing ways. May mga paraan na pangtalo, pangtalunan, at talagang talo. And there are winning ways. Dapat tayo ay uh, bilang mga anak ng Diyos ay marunong ng mga winning ways because the Lord is victorious and we should overcome challenges, problems, difficult situations. Dear God, we ask you to lead us, teach us, feed us with your wisdom. Nais namin Panginoon na tumanggap ng pagtuturo, pagtutuwid, inspirasyon. Akayin niyo po kami para ang amin ngayong tutunghayan na kasaysayan ay magsilbing aral sa aming lahat. Kayo po ang mangaral, tinig niyong madinig namin, at nawa ang ituturo niyo sa amin, Panginoon, magamit sa pagunlad ng aming buhay, pagpapagaan ng aming mga pasanin, at pagbibigay ng tagumpay sa marami namin mga proyekto sa buhay na ito. Lead us, teach us. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Winning ways. At ngayon, we will learn from the winning ways of Jochebed, the mother, and Miriam, the sister of Moses. Background, the Hebrews were slaves in Egypt. So, sa pagtingin mo pa lang yan, loser na. Meanwhile, the Hebrews kept growing in population, and to control that population, Pharaoh, the king, ordered that all newborn males be thrown into the river, where, of course, crocodiles awaited them. So, the Pharaoh would have uh, accomplished two things. One is to lessen the population growth of the Hebrew slaves because he was afraid that they might side with the political enemies of Egypt. And two, he would be able to make offerings to the crocodile gods in the river. So, the problem here was Pharaoh's order. And that order, in many ways, in many forms and color and shapes, and tunes can sometimes be present in our lives. So sa simula pa lang, isipin na natin na yung problema ng mag-anak nila Moses ay may mga katumbas sa problema sa ating pamilya, sa ating kompanya, sa ating communities. Exodus 2, 1 to 4. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married to a Levite woman and she became a pre- pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Malaking problema, lahat ng mga batang sanggol ay pinatatapon sa ilog. Itong uh, babaeng nangangalang Jochebed na uh, magiging nanay ni Moses, gumawa ng paraan kasi nung si Moses ay isilang, sabi niya napaka-special ng batang ito, kailangan tong buhayin. Hindi pwedeng sundin ang utos ng hari na siya ihulog sa ilog para kainin ang mga buhaya. So itinago niya at nagtagumpay naman siyang maitago ang isang bata ng tatlong buwan. But beyond that, it was already impossible. And besides, the Egyptians were very fastidious record keepers, maraming census, binibilang ang mga tao, etc., etc. So, gumawa sila ng isang basket na yari sa papyrus, katumbas ng ating water lily. Lumulutang sa tubig yon pag pinagsama-sama mo, pinahiran nila ng alkitran, mga kung ano-ano mga langis na labas para huwag pasukin ng tubig, at doon inilagay yung bata. At yung bata naman, inilagay sa tabi ng mga halamang ilog. In other words, nakasadlak siya doon. Hindi siya inaagos-agos sa tinatangay-tangay habang binantayan ng kanyang ate na si Miriam kung ano ang susunod na mangyayari. Kung nasa isip ninyo yung Ten Commandments ni Cecil B. DeMille, makabubuting burahin nyo kasi hindi biblical. Hollywood yung kwento. Dramatic pero hindi biblical. Ang totoo, mas dramatic pa nga yung biblical uh, account of the story. Doon kasi sa movie, kung nakita nyo na yan, e ipinaanod at dinala ng uh, agos ng ilog yung basket at isinadlak sa isang lugar. No, inilagay nila, they planted that basket in a very specific spot. And Miriam, who placed the basket there, stayed there to watch what would happen next. 
So there was a problem. The problem was there was a son, not a daughter. And sons were destined to die in that moment of history. And the problem was also how to keep the boy alive. Marami mga pamilya, kahit sa ating bansa, problema nila is how to keep their children alive. Not because some pharaoh orders them to be thrown in the river, but because of many other reasons. Kumisan, poverty. Kumisan, unwed pala yung mother. Pinaproblema niya kung paano niya didispatsahin itong batang ito. O yung iba naman, paano ko ito bubuhayin? Eh, unwed ako, etc., etc. So the problem actually confronts us in many ways. And what was the solution of this creative family? They don't give up easily. Hanggang kaya, itinago yung bata. Kaya inabot ng tatlong buwan. They extended the life of the boy as long as possible. And when necessary, they delivered the boy to the river, but increased the chances of winning. Inilagay sa isang basket na hindi lulubog, isinadlak sa pagitan ng maraming halamang ilog, at binantayan. They have a plan and they managed that plan. Hindi nila ipinaan kay sira-sira what will be, will be. Hindi nila ipinagparita si pinaanod, bahala ka na Lord. Ginawa nila ang what is humanly possible to keep the baby afloat in the river for as long as possible. Counterpart of what they did to hide him as long as possible. You know, when life is threatened, the immediate thing is to just continue to extend that life. Day by day, moment by moment, minute by minute, but extend it. And that's what they did. What happens next is better than any Hollywood plot. Exodus 2, 5 to 6. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe. And her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. This could have been the exact plan. This family knew what to do. It was not an accident. Miriam planted the basket exactly in the spot where they knew the princess comes to bathe. It was meant to be discovered by the princess herself. So they did what was humanly possible, and then God did what was next, to touch the heart of the princess. So she ordered one of her maids to get the basket and open it, and when she saw the baby there, she felt sorry for him. So niya, isa ito sa mga biktima ng dikri ng tatay ko na patayin ang mga batang ito. So, the family must have had prior knowledge about the princess's habits. Meron silang prior knowledge and intelligence on the topography of the river, on the exact spot where it would be safe from crocodiles, precisely because that's where the princess bathes. So it must be safe from crocodiles. And so that was where the baby was delivered. So, kumagat ang plano, nakita ng prinsesa ang bata at naawa. At nabibinig ni Miriam ang awa na ipinahayag ng babaeng ito. Exodus 2, 7. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? One of the most aggressive selling propositions you'd hear. At kayo na mga nasa sales, alam nyo yon. Hindi pa umu-order, itatanong mo na, kailan ko po ide-deliver? Next. Para talagang, uh, ide-deliver na ang pinag-uusapan, hindi, o order po ba kayo? No salesperson asks that. Kasi binibigyan mo ng option yung tao to say, no, I will not order. Hindi itinatanong, ang tanong agad, kailan po ako magde-deliver? Ilan po ang ide-deliver? O anong kulay ang gusto nyo? Ganun agad. Para, lundagan nyo na yung question na, bibili ba siya or not? Pagkakitang-pagkakita ni Miriam, she sees the moment, sumulpot siya mula sa kawalan, at sabi niya agad sa prinsesa, susundo po ba ako ng isang babaeng Hebrew para maging iyaya ng bata at siyang mag-alaga imbes kayo? A most timely approach. 
a bold proposition, but it was easy to say yes to. Why? Sabi niya, shall I go? Shall I get a nurse for the baby to take care for you? Ang ganda ng selling proposition. Ako ang tatakbo, ako ang kukuha ng yaya para maligtas ka sa pag-aalaga at pag-iisip ko sino pang pag-aalagain mo dyan. Ako nilang nangahanap at pag may nag-alaga na, aalagaan niya para sa'yo. Ang totoo nun, ipinaampon na niya agad yung bata sa prinsesa. Inassume niya na naaawa ka, therefore bubuhayin mo yan. Pag minuhay mo yan, sino mag-aalaga? Huwag mo nang problemahin yun. Baka mamaya itapon mo patuloy uli eh. Ako nalang problema ako nga hanap, ako magre-recruit, at aalagaan para sa'yo. Exodus 2.8, Yes, go! She answered. Kita nyo result? It works! And now the problem, the problem used to be Pharaoh's command. Now the answer is Pharaoh's daughter's command. It was an answer to the problem coming from the same household from the same seat of power. Sabi niya, Sige, sumundo ka ng yaya agad-agad. Exodus 2, 8 to 10. So, the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay, 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 pay you. Ha? Nag-e-echo pa yon. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. Mas maganda yan, kasi doon sa Cecil B. the male plot. Ba't nila iniba pa eh? So, dali-dali, umuwi ang bata, handang-handa naman yung nanay, nakagayak na siya. Walang sinayang na sandali, baka magbago pa ang isip ng prinsesa. Kaladkat ngayon yung babae. Ito na po, may nakuha na akong yaya. So, sabi ng prinsesa sa kanya, oh, alagaan mo tong batang ito. Ano ganon? Pabayaran kita. Nabayaran pa siya. No? Una, hindi na nawala yung anak niya, hindi napunta sa iba, sa kanya rin napunta, binabayaran pa siya habang inaalagaan niya. At pag lumaki na, for, to, for the boy to reach the legal age where he could be adopted, he would be returned to the princess. He would become prince of Egypt. So the problem son is no longer a problem. And how to keep the boy alive both of them are not problems anymore. May bonuses pa. No more hiding. Kasi ang prinsesa ang nagsabing alagaan ito, may bayad pa. Raising her own son not only saved his life, but became a livelihood. She was suddenly in City Hall's payroll. Kaya lang, hindi naman siya ghost employee. Talagang hinar siya at nagtatrabaho siya. The son becomes a prince. A disadvantage is turned into an advantage and a problem is turned into an opportunity. Ano ang lessons on winning from Mommy J and Sister M? Don't give up too easily. Now, I want you to think of your own problems now. Anong problema nyo? Anong bata ang nanganganib ang buhay? Kaya bata ba yun? Bagay o ano man? profession ba, trabaho ba yan, relasyon, laging may nanganganib ang buhay eh. Don't give up too easily. Don't call it a problem. And remember, a problem is a matching solution. Tulad ng nakita natin sa kwento, may solution naman pala. Find the solution. Ngayon, kung sasabihin nyo, wala pong solution, therefore, it's not a problem because the definition of a problem is that it has a solution. So, pag walang solution, huwag niyo solve Hindi problema yun. But most of the time, may solution yan. So, better just call it a challenge. Bawasan nyo, mga kapatid, ang mga bagay na tinatawag niyo na problem. Kaya lang may problema. Kaya lang may problema. Ang negative agad ng buong atmosphere. Sabi niyo, merong challenge. Parang merong kaagad na sigla para harapin yung challenge. No? Hindi problema problema kasi parang hindi mo na yung kaya masolve eh. And learn from this mother and daughter, stand up, level up to the challenge. Use your available resources as long as possible. 
Nakita niyo sa kwento, itinabo muna, pinahaba, nung hindi na kaya, gumawa na naman ng paraan. Pero hindi nila inilubog sa ilog. Alam niyo, kung kukuhani ka na ng Panginoon, hayaan mo ng Panginoon ang kumuha, huwag ka na magpakamatay. Ha, trabaho mo, habaan mo ang buhay mo. Kasi pag kukuhanin ka na niya, kahit naman sino, walang makakapigil. Pero kahit sino rin, walang makakapilit kung di pa tapat. No? So, huwag mo nang unahan yung problema na papalalain mo pa. Yung iba, pino, ang solusyon nila sa problema, lumikha na ibang problema. Eh. Aha! Nang bababae pala ang husband ko, man, lalalaki naman ako. Yung ba ang proble- sagot sa challenge? Ang challenge is, paano pa uwiin yan sa'yo alone? Hindi yung ikaw ngayon eh, may iba ka pang idadagdag na problema. Challenge! Wala lagi ang mga magulang ko, may bisyo, nag-aaway-aaway. Hindi na rin na kuuwi, total walang tao sa bahay. Why? Worsen the situation. Extend your graces, do what you can to have the most normal life possible under the circumstances. Pag meron ng apoy, huwag mo nang buhusan ng gasolina para lumaki pa. Dapat yon pulain yung apoy, pahinain hanggang siya tuluyang mawala. So use your available resources as long as possible and when necessary, change plans but don't give up. Nakita niyo sa kwento, una itinago nila pero hindi na pwede. So change plans. Same goal, to keep him alive. Pero paano naman ngayon? Ano? Change plans. So deliver the boy to the river but increase chances of winning. Hindi nila ipinasa kapalaran yung bata. Gumawa ng matibay na basket, nilagyan ng mga coating para lumutang, huwag pasukin ng tubig, at isinadlak sa isang lugar. May plano. Have a plan. As we always like to say, those who fail to plan, plan to fail. Kaya dapat may plano ka, paano ko sosolve ng challenge na ito? Anong mga resources ko? Anong pwede kong gawin? Anong pwede kong ilabas ha? Dahil meron ako, anong pwede kong hiramin? Anong pang resources ko? Creativity? People around me who can help? And then you manage the plan. Bantayan. Tulad ni Miriam, nakabantay, nakaabang sa anumang possible opening for her plan to happen. But it's important, brothers and sisters, if you would have winning ways is to have prior and ready knowledge. And in military parlance, is called intelligence. Kailangan alam mo. Kilala mo ang kaaway. Alam mo kung anong lakas ang kaaway. Sukat mo kung anong merong kang lakas. Anong pwede mong gawin para tama ang iyong magawa. Hindi aksidente ang magtagumpay. Yan ay pinaplano, ginagawa, tinatrabaho, at tinitibayan ng loob. Pero dito, may isang napaka element of winning ways. And that is, get help from the most effective agent. In this case, the princess. Who can overturn the command of the Pharaoh but his very own daughter? Who can afford to keep a baby alive in spite of this very unfriendly climate? except somebody from the royal family. So always identify who or what can help you. And then how do you get help? Offer to potential helpers a most attractive proposition. Nakita niyo yung in-offer ni uh, Miriam? It was easy to say yes to. It was easy. Why? Because it was convenient for the other. Pagkailangan nyo ng tulong ng isang tao, ng isang grupo, make it convenient for them, not for you. Sabi niya, I go, I get, and it is beneficial to the other person. The nurse, we will nurse the baby for you. At hindi niya agad sinabing, oh, ihahanap ko ng yaya, swaldohan nyo. Diba? Ganito, ganyan. Papahirapin mo yung pag-yes yung tao. Pinadali niya agad. Alam niyo kung bakit maraming tao hindi nagtatagumpay? Kasi hindi sila nakakakuha ng tulong. 
Bakit hindi sila nakakakuha ng tulong? Kasi, ang ginagawa nila is what they should not do. Lagi agad ang opening remarks nila, Help me. Help me. Tulungan mo ako. Kailangan ko ng tulong mo. Pwede mo ba akong tulungan? Pag nadilig ng mga tao yan, 99% nagsasara ng tenga, lumalayo, allergic ang mga tao doon sa laging, pwede mo ba akong tulungan? May problema ako. Baka nanay mo lang o tatay at mga close friends yung willing makinig. And yet, kung nakakataplo ka na, baka pagsawaan ka na rin ng kaibigan, ng mga tumutulong. Maraming tao, hindi nila makuha sa haba ng buhay nila what winning ways are. And don't open with, help me, give me. Yung give me, give me. Sino may sabing gusto kang bigyan ng tao? Sino may sabing gusto niya na yung inipon niya, pinaghirapan niya, ibigay sa'yo? At saka yung laging, do it for me. Yung iba, uh, i-interview mo sa trabaho. Um, why are you applying for this position? Yung nagpapakyot ng mga new graduates o yung nakakasampung application na hindi pa matanggap. Ito usually ang sagot. I like to learn from your very, very big company. You know, I like to experience very good things with your company and blah, blah, blah. Ha? Gusto mong i kita para you will learn? Gusto mong i-hire kita dahil gusto mong maka-experience? No. Pag ini-interview ka, why will I hire you? Sumo, because uh, there's a lot that I know that I can contribute to this company and I'm sure that you can also contribute to my growth. We will be happy together. Pagka hindi ka naman hire pero dapat totoo. Pagka gusto mong ma-hire ka, ang ino-offer mo sa company is what you can do for them, not what they can do for you. I like to learn. Mag-aral ka sa school, huwag dito. Diba? Malaki po yata ang benefits dito, nabalitaan ko. No, sabi mo, laki-laki po ng talent ko, gusto, gusto kong dito i-contribute kasi nabalitaan ko, very good din kayo sa mga workers. And it is not yabang. You must never sacrifice the truth for the sake of humility. Because you are selling yourself. Pero anong alam mo? Wala po, but willing to learn. Hindi ka maha-hire. Anong position na ina-applyan mo? Any. Ano yan? Slambo? Favorite dish? Any. Any. Ibig ko sabihin, wala kang specialization. Kahit sa kailagay. Gusto mong pagbilangin kita ng buhangin sa beach resort na ito? Kaya mo ba yun? We'll try. Losers. Merong mga losing ways. Sa simula pa lang, alam mo, hindi magtatagumpay itong taong ito. Liba na lang, magpalit siya ng style. So remember, you want people to help you. And remember this, one secret of the universe. You always need people's help to succeed. Nobody succeeds without people's help. And another secret of the universe, people help only those people that they like. So pag hindi ka like ng mga tao, hindi ka nila tutulungan. Pag hindi ka nila tutulungan, hindi ka magsasucceed. So the goal is to be liked first. And for that to happen, give, not take. Everyone loves a giver. Winning way yan, to give. Kaya sinabi sa Bible, it is more blessed to give than to receive because the blessing of the giver is maraming matutuwa sa kanya, bibigyan din siya. Magiging blessing yon. Yung mga baluktat ang isip, akala na, wow, naisahan ko siya, na one, two, three ko siya, nalamangan ko, akala niya, panalo siya. No, kasi hindi na siya mauulit sa tao na yon or baka singilin siya, o hanapin siya at gantihan. That's why it is always good to give. Pag may good client ka, huwag mong patayin. Buhayin mo siya. Pag may puno na namumunga, lalo mong alagaan, huwag mong iabuso. Do not kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Dapat marunong kang hindi one time, big time, na isahan mo yung tao, kumita ka ng malaki. Eh, ang mga tao naman matatalino. Kung hindi nila naisip agad-agad, nung iniisahan mo sila, mapag-iisip-isip din nila yun. Hindi ka na makakaasa na nga namang tulong mula sa kanila. So, give not take, or at least, give first before taking. That's how it works. For the best and sustainable relationship with people is to give and take and give. Whenever you can, 
as long as you can be the most recent giver, not the most recent recipient. Tuwing kaya mo, liba na lang hinanghina ka, may sakit, may karamdaman, o may malaking suliranin, ikaw dapat ang magbigay. At ang last performance mo is a performance of giving, not of receiving. When you position yourself that way, you will be able to solve many of your problems, surmount many of your challenges, and even end up winning because people will love to help you. People love givers and helpers. That's the truth in life. You succeed mainly because people help you. Of course, God helps us. Hindi naman yun ang pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. Yung human level ang pinag-uusapan natin. Nandiyan yung Diyos, hindi nawawala sa equation. But on the human level, people help those they like. So ang tanong, likeable ka ba? Kung ang laging linya mo ay, give me, help me, I have a problem, do you think anybody will like you? Pagsasawaan ka. Tulungan ka minsan. Mamaya may problema ka na naman. Tutulungan ka ulit. Nagkakaroon ng donor fatigue. Pinagsasawaan din. Kasi ang tao naman, walang bottomless resources. Limited din. Bibigyan ka ng konti. Tapos pag nakita ka ulit, hindi ka pa rin nakakabangon. Bibigyan ka na naman. So yung konti na tira niya, itutulong ulit sa'yo. Sa pangatlong beses, dadong ka na naman, may kailangan ka na naman, iwasan ka na. Huwag kang magtampo. Natural lang yun. People will want to preserve what they have to keep themselves alive. People don't work hard to be able to give you something when you ask, except our parents, and probably a few people who love us very much. Walang tampo-tampo. Kaya kung minsan nagkasakit kami, tutulong sa'yo, pero naman, siyem nabuhan ka na sa ospital, ano? Nakatatlong balik na yung mga dumadalaw, andong ka pa, talagang mauubusan sila ng kakayahan para tumulong, hindi ka dapat magtampo. Ang haba naman kasi ng pagkakasakit mo. Eh, wala ka pang naitanim na mabuti. Wala kang nagawang mabuti, tapos aasahan mo, tutulungan ka ng tao. Kaya maraming hindi nagtatagumpay, hindi sila marunong magtanim. Sa mga panahon na kaya nila magtanim. Mga kapatid, basta kaya nyo magtanim, magtanim kayo. Kaya nyo magbigay, kayo yung magbigay. Dumarating yung panahon na kuminsan, ikaw talaga mga ngailangan, at least marami kang tanim. Hindi lang na uobligay yung taong tumulong sa'yo, willing. At kung humaba yung panahon ng pangangailangan mo, pwede mong habaan ang oras ng panghihingi. Willing pa rin. Kasi mahal ka. Kasi love ka. Kasi like ka nila. So important that people like and love people who make their lives easier, nicer, better. Magbabakasyon ka sa bahay ng may bahay, tapos para kang prinsesa na kaupo sa tasa, hindi ka naman kasoy. Ang tamad-tamad mo, ang takaw-takaw mo, yung pinaghigaan mo lang, hindi mo maligpit, gagamit ka ng banyo, naging pusahali pang labas mo, nabasa lahat. Sa palagay mo, maimbita ka pa uli. Tapos darating ka, mamamasyal ka, pagdating ko, gutom na gutom na ako, anong ulam? Wala ka man lang dala, hindi ka man lang dumaan sa palengke o supermarket. O may dala akong ulam para sa ating lahat. Tandaan nyo yan. Nagugustuhan ka ng tao. Pag ang presensya mo sa buhay nila, nagpapadali, nagpapaganda, at nagpapaunlad sa kanila. Ganun lang talaga yun. Kaya kung dumarating yung panahon na wala kang kapera-pera, nakikitira ka, dapat ang sipag mo pinag-aaral ka ng konsino, dapat ang bait-bait mo, hindi lang sa high grade. Humahanap ka ng paraan, hugasan mo yung kotse niya, linisi mo yung bahay niya. Sigurado, hindi pa nag enrollment ulit. Tinatanong ka na naman, o oh, magkano kailangan mo nag-enrollment? Pero kung yung pagmamukha mo, makikita lang niya, tuwing may babayaran kang kailangan, pagsasawaan ka. Di ka magtatagumpay sa buhay. So, do you brighten up a room just by entering it? Do you beautify life just by being there? Or are we a burden? Pagsasawaan at pagsasawaan ka nun. At pag dumating yung malaking chance, opportunity, walang tutulong sa'yo, then it passes you by. And hindi mo napansin, tumanda ka na, na malapit ka ng gumraduate, tatawagin ng hukay, wala pa nangyari sa buhay mo. Kasi walang willing tumulong. Be that blessing to people, and they will help you solve your problems, overcome your challenges, and succeed. How else? What are the winning ways of this mother and daughter tandem? Get bonuses. Get paid. And get paid well. 
bakit may mga tao na kumikita ng ang laki-laki sa buhay nila at maraming tao all their lives sa Cuba na sa pagtatrabaho ang liit ng kita. Hindi na natapos hulugan ng payong kasi bago pa sira, bago mabayaran, sira na uli. Kukuha na naman ang hulugan. Nakatali habang buhay sa pagkaliit-liit na budget. Eh hindi naman tama. Trabaho ng trabaho. Because they get paid, yes, but they don't get paid well. How do you get paid well? You get paid well when you have knowledge. Kailangan may specialization ka. Yung any, I like to apply for any position that's vacant in your company. Will anybody be interested with you? Tapos yung application form mo pa, napakatamad mo, to whom it may concern. Alam niyo mga letter na, Dear Sir, Ma'am, Ha? Hindi mo walang pinili kung anong kasarian ko? Sir slash ma'am, ba't ko babasahin ang sulat mo when you don't even care to address it to me? There are losing ways and there are winning ways. Sulat, hihingi ng donation, tatlong pages. Do you think I have all the time in the world to spend reading your long letter? Why don't you go direct to the point? Tell me how I can help so I can decide immediately after three sentences if I like to help or not. But if you waste my time, you lose my interest. There are winning ways and there are losing ways. So you get paid well when you have knowledge. Therefore, specialize in something. Bawat isang tao binigyan ng Diyos ng special talent. Now let me tell you a secret of the universe. You become rich when you make a livelihood out of your special talent. Because in that department, you can become a star. You can rise because you're gifted. Pero when you take any available job, tagabilang halimbawa ng munggo sa palengke, hindi masamang trabaho. Pero hindi ka aangat sa buhay. Liba na lang, ang talent mo, ang bilis mo magbilang ng munggo, pag ginanong isang kaban, bilang mo ng ilang piraso. Dapat, ang trabaho ang kinukuha mo, yung bagay sa talent mo, hindi yung kung ano lang available. And that is the case of more than 80% of the people on the planet. Because they don't look into themselves and see what giftedness they have. How the Lord has gifted them powerfully. Oh, look at Manny Pacquiao. Kung ano siya nag-rise to that? Diba, dati naglilinis din sa mga bote, nagtitinda ng mga bulaklak, kung ano-ano. Eh, hindi naman yun ang special talent niya. Eh, boxing pala. Kung nanatili siya sa paglilinis ng bote, buhay pa rin siya ngayon. Pero, hindi natin siya pag-uusapan. Anong talent mo? Diyan, ferang Diyos. Binigyan niya ang lahat ng tao ng talent. But you've got to cultivate that talent, develop it, and sell it. You've got to sell your talent. So, plan well. Sell your best strengths and expertise. Kinukuha ka, halimbawa, ng isang employer. O dito ka, pwede ka mamaging receptionist. Ang talent ko po, maging treasurer. Ang galing-galing ko po mag-budget at maghawak ng cash. Papatulayan ko sa inyo, itong mga record ko, ganon 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 Nung pumasok ko sa ganitong company, nakato ang kanil ng unnecessary expenses. Dapat back up mo by support. Pag kineclaim mo na maghusay ka, hindi nasa hangin yung imagination mo. Merong support. Mahahire ka. Pero any vacant position, may stuck ka dyan all your life. Sayang yung talent mo when you are in the wrong place. And you will not make a lot of money, you will not make a lot of profit, kahit sa halaman, pag itinanin mo sa maling lupa, hindi siya masyadong mamumunga. Dapat nasa tamang lupa. So don't look for vacancies if you like to be an employee. Create your own job, your work, or position. May mga empleyado, nakikita nila yung takbo ng kumpanya nila, tapos papasok doon sa may-ari o doon sa manager, sabi niya, meron akong idea how to solve this kind of problem of our company and I think I can do it if you'll give me the chance. Transfer me to that position or create that position for me and wait for results. Then magbubunot ka sa kinakalagyan mo na hindi mo naman na-enjoy. You don't have to work hard. You can work smart. And work hard. But hard work alone will not guarantee that you'll be lifted up of poverty. Ang daming hard working na hindi umaasenso because they're working hard in the wrong jobs. Doing the wrong things. Neglecting their best effort. So you must sell, sell your best strength. 
Kung halimbawa, mayroong isang tanghalan, tagalinis ka ng banyo, which is a very honorable work. Pero ang galing-galing mo palang mag-perform, di mag-apply ka. Sa mga alam nyo, pwede pa akong kumanta. Pwede pa akong mag-ganito. Aasenso ka. Huwag niyong hintayin na alokin kayo. Hindi yun mangyayari. At marami mga empleyado sumasama ang loob sa kanilang office, na trabaho sila 20-30 years, hindi sila umasenso, ang liit-liit ng increase. Hindi. Huwag niyong hintayin na yung inyong mga manager mag-iisip, paano ko kaya mapapaligaya ni si employee one, si employee two? No, they are not thinking of you. So, you think of yourself and go to them. You say, 10 years na ako sa trabaho na to, na master ko na, and I think I'm ready for another position. I'm ready to contribute more to this company because of my experience. Pero yung kikimikimi ka, hinihintay mo mapansin ka, tapo na ng pagtingin, hindi yan mangyayari. You have to be more aggressive. Tingnan mo sila, Miriam, hindi nila hinintay na pumunta yung prinsesa sa bahay nila. Tapos yun, ay, may bata pala dito. Kawawa naman. Bakit hindi nyo alagaan at babayaran ko kayo? Hindi yun. Some people say, strike the iron while it's hot. But it's very seldom that the iron is hot enough to be struck and to be shaped into what you want. What do you do when the iron is not hot? Therefore, you cannot strike it. Well, strike it till it becomes hot. Ordinary people say, strike the iron when it's hot. Special people say, I'll make it hot by striking. Create your situation. Take charge of your life. So create your job and job opportunities. Do not fit into qualifications. Sell your talent. Kasi titignan mo, pag nag-a-apply ka, anong qualification na require nila? Pipilitin mo yung mag sa qualification na yon. Irerewrite mo pa yung biodata mo. You can say, you know, these qualifications are not mine, but may, may I offer you my qualifications that you did not seem to remember to look for, but I believe can help you, then offer it. Huwag mong antayin na ikaw ay maalala. Yung isang past president natin, kauupo pa lang sa wala kanya, may isang dumating sa kanyang babae. Sabi niya, I'd like you to consider my credentials because I think I can help your government if you made me secretary of this. Diting na, naging secretary of that siya. Inantay ba niya na siya pansinin? No. Be proactive. And then when you are given an opportunity, so, oh, sige, susweldo ako kayo. Palakihin tong bata. Raise a prince. Make an excellent product na nung ibinalik nila sa prinsesa, ready to become prince, yung bata. Like Moses, that same product will in turn help you. Remember, your product is your best biodata. It is your best business card. Kumisan, may makikita ka na bagong gawang kung ano. Sino gumawa nito? Hahanapin mo eh, kasi ang ganda ng gawa. May natikmang kang pagkain. Sino nagluto nito? Ang husay. Bahala kung magtayo ng specialty restaurant, baka pwede siya yung chef. Lahat ng ginagawa natin, dapat quality, dahil laging may nakakakita niya na potential market mo. Huwag kang, pwede na yan, pwede na yan. Kasi ganun din ang mangyayari sa buhay mo, pwede na yan. Alis yung pwede na yan. Ganyan lang talaga ang buhay. Burahin yan sa vocabulario. Dapat, sabi mo, dapat hindi ganyan ang buhay babaguhin ko yan. Hindi yung ganyan lang talaga ang buhay. Pwede na to. Ay, wala tayong magagawa. Losers ang nagsasabi niyan. So, alisin nyo yan sa vocabulary. Ang mga anak ng Diyos, dapat winners. Not winners against other people, but winner against your own self, your own weakness, your own possible destructive tendencies. So, what is your problem now? First, call it a challenge. Learn from Joe Kebed and Miriam. Have a plan. Manage and execute it. Make it attractive for people to help you by giving back to them. A, a person who gives is a very attractive person. That is why it is more blessed to give than to receive. Dahil sabi rin sa Bible, give and it will be given you. Kaya blessing. When you give, it's given to you. And besides, even if it's not given back to you, the moment that you gave, ibig sabihin, you already previously received because you have something to give. 
givers are recipients first. That's why it's only but natural and expected that you give also so that the giving cycle will continue. So givers are recipients first, then they become recipients again because they give. Winning ways. Sabi ni Lord, I want you to have a full life. I came that you might have a full life. But you cannot have a full life if you're a loser. Or a loser for long. Or a loser for life. Win. Develop a lifelong network of supporters and helpers by first being a supporter and a helper yourself. Yung iba nagpupunta ng account sa banko, good. Nagpupunta ng mga savings, good. Pero magpunta kayo ng mga friends, people that you help, people that you really genuinely care about because these are the same people who will help you and care about you in your moment of need. Pag wala kang naipupundar na friend, baka ni walang makipag-living sa'yo. Madaling makita yan sa mga lamay, sa mga libingan. Sabi ni ba, ay bakit sasampu lang ang dumating? Walang katao-tao, siguro masama o galit. Sinichismis ka pa eh, bangkay ka na nga. Pero pag ang daming tao, wow, siguro ang bait ng taong ito, ang daming tinulungan, ang daming pinaligaya. Kaya ayan, marami tuloy nagluloksa. Malalaman at malalaman. Magpundar yung magkaroon ka ng mga kakampi, mga aliado, mga nagmamahal sa'yo, nakikipagmahalan ka, winner ka nun. Kaya winner ang tao na active sa church. Marami ka laging kasama, karamay, although nadadami ka rin sa problema nila, ganun talaga, alam nga naman puro ka-take. Siyempre, give, take, give, ganun ang buhay, inhale, exhale. That is how to live. God does not want us to be losers. Ayaw lang Diyos, maging karaniwan lang ang mga tao. Lahat special. But for you to shine, be in the right place. Take your correct place. And you will shine. Don't settle for anything less than that. Huwag mo sabihin, ganyan ta talaga yan. Wala tayong magagawa. Because sabi, I can do all things through Christ. Who gives me strength. And Christ likes you to be a winner. Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful story of Jochebed the mother and Miriam the sister. Wise women who made the nearly impossible possible by your help, with your blessing, but naturally with their participation. Turuan mo kami, Lord, na ma-identify ang dapat namin gawin, what we should actively do, so that we could be winners, not against other people, but against our own weaknesses. Pagbulay-bulayan natin ito, mga kapatid, ano ang mga personal application nito sa ating buhay. Dear Lord, as your people, stay silent for a while, let your Holy Spirit teach guide, correct, 